Hi, I'm Riley, and this is RJK Golf. As a professional golfer, questions that I often get asked are, what's the hardest golf course you've ever played, and what's the longest golf course you've ever played? Today, we're gonna have a look at one courses that answers both questions. We're here at Capitol Hill on the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, and we're gonna play the Judge Course from the Black Tees. That's about 8,000 yards. It is one of the best public golf courses that you can find in America, and it's also one of the most challenging and longest. So my friend Isaac and I will be playing a scramble from the Black Tees to see if we can break par, and this is our vlog. Welcome to RJK Golf. So you gotta kinda keep that club head below your hands. All right, yeah, nice. Good. Here we are, the first hole of the judge. A 200 foot drop from the black tees, the Alabama River shaping the hole from behind and up the right hand side, and the Montgomery skyline. This is one of the best opening holes you will find anywhere in the world. Isaac safely hits one very close to danger up the right hand side, setting us up to have a great round. We move quickly now to the second shot from 116 yards out of the rough ball above my feet with a gap wedge. I flighted it in there nicely to about nine feet. We now move on to the very picturesque first green of the judge course. If you've never played here before, all of the slopes and the grain move from left to right down towards the water. We have about a nine foot sliding birdie putt here. First roll of the day from Isaac, and he describes it best. Oh my. The second hole is a very long dog leg right par four with water right and tall grass left. There's actually a tree in the middle of the fairway, but from the black tees, it's about impossible to reach. Thankfully, Isaac dissects the middle of the fairway, giving us a look at the green. As I had said off the tee, there is a tree in the middle of the fairway, but thankfully we were far enough back where that did not affect us. Now there is a hazard to the right all the way down the hole, and there is more trouble long and left of the screen. We avoided that by not hitting the green, but ending up just short right in the bunker, but without a penalty. Isaac ends up hitting a beautiful little shot here from this front right bunker, and I would just give as a pro tip to everyone playing this course for the first time, if you can't feel confident hitting the green, this bunker is a safe bailout area away from the water and the trees. Now I had about a four and a half foot par putt here, and again, just like the first hole, everything slopes down towards the water as well as the grain Thankfully, I was close enough where I could just slide this right into the middle of the hole for a par. All right, we find ourselves on the third hole, which is the first and, if you can believe it, easiest par three, sitting at about 190 yards from the black tees. Once again, the trend continues. Hazard right, tough bailout left, but Isaac hits it flush. Isaac hits it flush takes the slope that sits in the center of the green that funnels to the back right, and he leaves us with about a nine foot birdie putt here. Yes, a lot of Isaac early, I promise my time is coming. He's got a downhill right to left putt here, which he just barely leaves high, but gives us an easy tap in for par. We now find ourselves on the par five fourth hole, which is 617 yards, if you can believe it, from the back tees. Not even the longest hole in the course, but one of the more challenging as there is a hazard all the way up the right side, as well as the left side starting with the second shot. Isaac gets us out of the chute here, We're doing what he does best, hitting a fade. We're in the rough a little bit here, but if you can see those mounds that line the hole up the right hand side. They actually protect you from going into the trees, so as long as you can hit it somewhere in the middle of those mounds, you'll kick back to the left a little bit and give yourself a clean look at the hole which is what you're gonna need if you're playing the black tees from that far back. I left myself about 158 yards here. Decided to hit a seven iron since I didn't know how I was going to react out of the rough. Now, as you can see, I caught it very, very well. And I ended up just beyond the green on the right-hand side. Potter. Thankfully though, I was not on the wrong side of the ridge that runs through the middle of the green. And I have about 50 feet here, but I can just roll it down the two slopes that protect this whole location from the back, bending right to left the whole way, and I leave about 
eight feet up the hill for par. Now I will say as a little tip, if you're playing somewhere that is not the black tees, this front right hole location will be your friend and is usually a pretty easy birdie look. But we'll see if I can roll this one in for par. Here we are on the fifth hole of the judge. First of all, one of the most beautiful and breathtaking views you will find on a golf course. Very difficult though with water all the way down the right hand side. It is 250 yards from the back tees just to get over the left side of that bunker up there. We have no shot tracer here just because of the angle, but I had a nice draw up the left hand side that finished just outside the fairway. As always with the judge, when you manage to play it safe, you will get rewarded. Here we are on the left side, just in the rough. However, it is the best angle into the green. Isaac absolutely flushes an eight iron from 160 yards to this front left pin, which is the most gettable birdie pin, in my opinion, on the entire green. We were left with about 15 to 20 feet, and as you can see, just like the holes before, everything goes from left to right towards the water. A little tip here, if you've never played in the south on Bermuda greens, you can see how light green it is where I'm putting. That means the grain is running away from where the camera angle is. I just ran it a few feet by here. And as you can see, farther back on the green, it gets a little darker on the upslope. If it's dark, you're into the grain. If it's light, you're down grain. Got it. Three iron, 220 yards, par three. I hope you enjoyed that cool little first person view of this island green of the sixth hole of the judge. Uh, what I couldn't say for the first shot is obviously a very daunting tee shot, but there is a little bit of protection here for this back right pin to bail out left, which I did. I had about 40 feet on this first putt, hit it just right of the hole. It is a huge slope down where I was at, so to get it to this close, I was actually pretty happy with. And from 220 yards to have about a six or seven foot putt for par, I think we would take just about every day. The seventh hole of the judge course at Capitol Hill is one of the most daunting par fives you will find anywhere in the state of Alabama. With a little over 260 yard carry here to get over the water, there is nowhere to miss. And thankfully, Isaac hit one straight up the gut for us, which will put us in position to at least have a chance to birdie or par this hole. Now, for most people, including us playing from the blacks, you're not gonna reach the water unless you hit it right, so it's okay to take out a three wood here. I sling a little draw up the left-hand side and it bounces down to the middle of the fairway, setting up about as good of a look as you can get from the black tees, which is an eight iron here for Isaac from 165 yards. Now, a little bit of a tip, this hole plays about a club longer going into the green because of the elevation change. And Isaac is able to hit a pretty good shot right at the flag, but unfortunately we were in between clubs and we came up just a little bit short. Now, if you can get it up on top of the slope like Isaac did here, this is one of the easier pitch shots that you could have on this hole. I will say it was a little surprising to see this pin on the left-hand side, but hey, it gave Isaac about a seven foot putt for par. After saving par at the par 5 7th hole, you will find the fairly benign looking par 4 8th hole that stretches out to 466 yards from the black tees. But don't for a minute think that just because there's no water on this hole that it is not a very difficult hole. If you miss it over that bunker on the right, you'll be left in the trees that you see up there further down the hole. But luckily we were able to find the right side of the fairway. I hit a pretty good tee shot leaving Isaac 177 yards. He has a little bit more power than I do with his iron, so he took a seven iron here. Hit a pretty good shot. The safest play, no matter where this pin is, is straight up the gut between the bunkers, and you'll leave yourself, just like Isaac did here, with about 45 feet for birdie. If you hit it a little bit closer, that's great, but with this difficult contouring green, it's always better to be safe, play for the middle of the green, and see if you can make a putt.
the run of extremely difficult holes is over for now at least on the judge. The ninth hole is a short and straightforward par 4 that is beautifully shaped by the trees and the bunkering on this hole. Isaac was able to hit one right up the right side of the fairway forest, catching the bull and shooting it down to about 120 yards here. The pin was in the back left on this day, which is actually, in my opinion, the easiest hole location that this green offers because the ball, if hit over the slope, will funnel right to the hole. There are a few other easy pins like front right, but as you'll see, we were set up beautifully for about a 15-foot birdie putt to end the front nine.